Hey everyone, it's Jen. Thank you so much for joining me today. Uh, today I want to show you a project I made with some Scrap Diva design products. Uh, Erica asked me to be a guest designer for her, her website and I, um, I showed you guys last week the dies and stamps that Erica sent me. And I knew right away when I saw this charcuterie board set that I wanted to make a little mini album. So that's what I did all day yesterday and I think it came out super cute. So I wanted to show it to you and show you the uh, products that I used to make it. And also at the end, I'll, uh, I'll, we'll do a, like a little craft with me and I'll show you how to make a page in case you are interested. So I will list all of the products down below and link them of course to Erica's shop. And let's get started. I hope you like what I made. Okay, so like I said, this was my inspiration, this set. This is the charcuterie board set. It comes in round also, but I use this one, the traditional charcuterie board set. Uh, it comes with the little circle that you can cut out if you want to, you don't have to use it if you're going to uh, make it into like if you're going to have a hole here, which I did. But if you want to fill in that hole, you could just use this set or this die. So it comes with that small one, the and a few different sizes. And then it comes with a background piece for the largest one, which is good. I use the largest two to make my pages. I also use this set. This is the kitchen utensil set. And this has lots of great uh, utensils, obviously. It's also got a few pots and frying pans, and um, I love the rolling pin. So I used a bunch of these in my project. I also used this set. This is the pin flag set. And um, I had thought that they layered because it comes with these two, but they don't. These are just larger than these. and. This, the larger set has stitching on the edges. So, so you can use either or, and I did use a few of these in my project. And then last, I used this set. This is the new um, apron die and stamp set. So it comes with the two apron dies. You can either use them separately or together. And I chose to use them together in all the ones that I made. And then I used a bunch of the stamps that I just uh, I love these stamps. They're so cute and they fit perfectly in the apron. So it makes a really cute embellishment. So I use those. All right. And let me go ahead and show you my project and I'll explain more as we go on. So this is my little mini album. And uh, I used the a couple of new paper pads from Michaels. I used the French Chateau and Into the Garden. So uh, if you have those paper pads, that's what that's what I used. Or I think they're available at Michaels now. And then this charm I actually bought from Erica. Um, I think when she first opened her shop, it came in a pack of uh, I don't know five or eight of them or something. And I thought the colors worked really well with this. Um, mini album. So I used that and I used a bunch of trims in my stash and coordinating colors and just tied them up around the binder clip that I used to hold everything together. And I like to do that for mini albums just to bring all the colors together, add some texture, and um, I just like to have fabric in all of my uh, projects. So let's look at the cover of my album. And uh, I used, as you can see, I used a few of the things from the kitchen utensil set. I used the big stock pot die and it doesn't um, cut out the lid separately, but I just, <clears throat> excuse me, I cut it out of two different papers and then just, you know, just cut the lid part off and then glued it onto the flowered paper just to, you know, paper piece and make it look a little, a little fun and, it, you know, didn't take long at all. So the Baking Sweet Memories is Erica's, one of Erica's new stamps. And I stamped it with some um, regular um, embossing ink and then put on some gold embossing powder and heat embossed it. And I think that came out really cute. I like how the gold picks up the gold in the utensils. So the utensils I've just cut out with some gold matte paper that I have from Sizzix. This pot I also cut out of the different papers. This is like a um, pearlized gray color that uh, comes in a little paper pad from Michaels. And then I used another like paper pieced lid for the top of that one. And I used some twine to tie the utensils together, added a little heart bling. And as you can see, there, there is stitching on the charcuterie boards, with the, which I think just adds so much interest. And 
for more interest, I added a little piece of trim at the bottom and I sandwiched that between two layers of paper so it's nice and secure. For the top, um, I added, I punched a hole with my crop dial and added some white um, eyelets that I had gotten at Michael's. So that's my cover, Baking Sweet Memories. So as you can probably guess, it's a recipe book. And the recipes that I used, I used, if you remember around Christmas time, a um, little bit before Christmas time, I had a PDF file of um, like cookie recipes that a, a lot of people um, emailed me for the recipe file. It's a free, free PDF if you haven't emailed me for it and you'd like it, just uh, email me. There's my information in the description box down below, but I'll show you those recipes and you can decide if you'd like them or not. It's free. <laughs> but um, okay, so let's go and look inside. So that's the cover. And on the inside, on the back of each charcuterie board, I added a apron embellishment that I made. And on the right side, I added a recipe. So let me just show you the apron, sorry for that glare, I used a gold Martha Stewart doily for this one and it's very reflective. So anyway, this is the apron and as you can see I layered up the stitched one and the one that has the eyelet trim and I just like how it adds the eyelet trim on the edge of the apron. And um, I didn't add one of Erica's stamps here. I added a Stampin' Up stamp that I had, just like a bunch of utensils. And then I made like a faux pocket with some fabric tape and added um, a little bit of like marker to look like stitching on the edges of that. And this is one of Erica's pin flag banners that um, the background, the gingham one. And then I just added a sticker from Doodlebug and a couple of heart buttons that I just picked up at Joann's. So very simple, There's this is some trim that came in a Hobby Lobby bundle. I gotta glue that so it doesn't come untied. So that's the first uh, reverse page. Now this recipe is a digital stamp from Diana Markham. I used her recipes as well as the ones that I mentioned before. So you'll see some of hers and some of mine. So I'll, um, I'll link this down below too, it's from her Etsy shop. But uh, it's just a gingerbread loaf recipe and I uh, printed it out and colored it with some alcohol markers. And this is also one of Erica's pin flags and I just cut off one side of it to look like a banner. I hot glued on a button with some twine. I did some embossing on this paper. These are all papers from those two paper pads I mentioned in the beginning. And uh, yeah, that's the first recipe page. Very simple, but I love the, I love the, um, how the gold looks with the charcuterie board die because you could really see the stitching on that. So yeah, like that. And the other side looks like this and this is what the facing page looks like or the next page looks like. And the reverse of the previous one has this apron and this one I used one of Erica's stamps that says baked with love and care. And uh, yeah, this is a, actually this, I think this uh, doily is from KS Craft. I bought a pack of them a long time ago. I think that's where I got it. So uh, yep, I used some coordinating papers for this apron, some bling that Mommy Loves Gigi had sent me in a giveaway that I won. And yeah, so I just want to keep that side pretty simple with the aprons and then just a doily behind them. So basically that's what I did for all of them. Okay, for the next recipe page, this is one of my recipes and uh, it's for oatmeal cookies. So I thought this would just be a nice place to have all of my recipe files together as well as uh, Diana Markham's who I just love her recipes too and I think they're really cute the way she does them. So I just put them all together here. Uh, so anyway, this Rick Rack is a sticker from Doodlebug uh, in one of their collection packs and I just cut it in half and put on the edges of this um, recipe. And then I added a new button that I just picked up at Joann's. I just cut the back off and hot glued it. And this burlap trim here is also new. It's from Dollar Tree. So that's my next page. Um, pretty simple, but I think it looks super cute. And I colored the cookies part uh, with some with some alcohol markers. Okay, so the next page looks like this. And, uh, and again, I think it's super cute. Here's another apron and it says, Baking is Love Made Edible. This is Erica's stamp and her dies, of course. 
And this is from the kitchen utensil set. This is the apron, and I did paper piece this a little bit so it would have a different middle than the handles, but you can leave it all one. That's how it cuts out. But if you don't, you know, if you want to change it up a little bit, just cut it out twice, and then it's easy enough to cut the handles off and glue them onto the other one. And this is some ephemera that I got recently from the Not Too Shabby shop in that strawberry collection. And yeah, very simple. I hot glued on a button here with some more of that cotton twine. It's actually pearl cotton. Okay, and this is the next page. This is my chocolate chip cookie recipe. This is uh, the one that my kids and I use all the time when we're making cookies. And I used another one of Erica's pin flags. And this one I tried to make a little vintage. I stamped a um, a Stampin' Up! rolling pin stamp that I have, and then I just spelled out the word yum with some alphas that I have also, and distressed the edges with the Distress Oxide. And for the recipe, I also used some Distress Oxide in Vintage Photo for the edge, for the edge of the recipe. And uh, yeah, this one is super cute, I think, and uh, just a little bit different than the others, but I like the brown because that kind of reflects back to the chocolate chip cookie part. All right, now the next page looks like this, and the back of the chocolate chip cookies is another apron die and it or die cut, and it says Love at First Bite, also from Erica's stamp set. And I, I love that, it's so cute. I love the different fonts that she used. And um, I hot glued on a button with some more of that pearl cotton tied behind it. And this is from the utensil set, and I backed it with a uh, gold one that I cut out and didn't punch out the little holes, so you could see it through there. And this one I used a white doily. I had gotten these on clearance at Hobby, Lob Hobby Lobby a while back. Um, I like the coordinating papers for the apron, and yeah, I just think that's a really cute example of one of the aprons. On this page, the next recipe, this is a Diana Markham one for snowball cookies. This is also in her Etsy shop. And this is a stamp from Erica that says sprinkled with love. And I embossed this with some like teal, I think it's called like uh, garden patina maybe. I'm not sure, something like that. But I had gotten it at Hobby Lobby, the embossing um, <clears throat> powder. So, and behind that is one of Erica's pin flags, and I hot glued on some new Joanne buttons with some more of that pearl cotton tied through. And then I edged the edge, or inked the edge of this die with, um, or this die cut with some spun sugar distress oxide. This comes from uh, my stash, this die. I don't remember where I got it. But um, yeah, I think it came out really cute too. Um, I love the aquas and pinks that I used in this one and a little bit of greens and blues too. So really, really fun. This is the perfect size, this, this larger, largest charcuterie board to put a little recipe card in and it looks cute too. And this one I added some brick rack down at the bottom between the two layers. So this is the next page. And for the apron side, Oh, let's just look at it like that. This is another one of the stamps. It says Live, Love, Bake. Oh, it's so cute. Love it. And I, again, used the two aprons and layered them together, added a piece of rickrack here, tied a bow up at the top. And this is also from the kitchen utensils collection or die set. And I cut it out of the gold foiled paper and this pattern paper, and also one 10 pound cardstock in white. So it's a nice, pretty thick utensil. And when I cut it out, um, I kept those little like holes in there for the gold piece. I didn't pop them out so you could see them once I put the pattern paper on top of that. And I like how that looks, but otherwise they pop right out if you want it to look more real. And this is just a cabochon I had in my stash and I hot glued that to it just because yeah, gingerbread. <laughs> and I made it gingerbread because the next page is my gingerbread cookie recipe. So you might remember that from a few months ago. So I just printed it out again. It was fun to have another excuse to use these uh, tag files that I had made. And I hot glued on a cabochon that I think, I think looks kind of like a gingerbread cookie, but not necessarily Christmas. So that's why I wanted to put that on there. So um, yeah, super cute. Love the colors for these papers. And yeah, so that's that one. 
Okay, the next rest or the next apron page says stuffed with sugar, wrapped with love. Again, this is from the utensil die set, and I did paper piece this. It, it just cuts out one long piece, but I cut it out of the polka dot paper as well and just cut it off there and glued it on top of the gold one that I made just to make it look like the handle was different. Just, you know, something you could do if you'd like to. Um, also another stamp from Erica, stuff, stuff with sugar wrapped with love. And since this, it says love, I added a few hearts, buttons from Joann's and a heart cookie cabochon as well, just to continue the theme. So I love the colors of that, again, with the pink and aqua. And then the last recipe page I made is this one. This is one of my recipes for vanilla cookies. And I really like how this page came out. Um, I really, I put this um, pin flag here and then I just cut off the edge. So you don't have to use, you know, you don't have to use them as flags. You don't have to use them full size. You can cut them off any way you want. They're very versatile, nice to use as little tags like this. This is a doodle bug sticker that says let's bake. And I'd gotten this bunch of little spoons from Etsy. I remember they weren't in stock last time I checked, but I will check. And if they're available, I'll leave the link down in the description box below. And I tied some of that ivory pearl cotton through there and hot glued it onto the page. And I added some brick rack down at the bottom and uh, inked the edges of the recipe and also colored with alcohol markers. So the back, I just put a couple stamps that I had in my stash and I actually colored the strawberry. I don't usually do that, but this time I did. So that's my little project. And I thought we could do one together. I, you know, sometimes assume that people know how to create like a mini recipe or a mini album page like this. And not everybody does. And people want to know different techniques too. So I thought I'd share with you how I do it. So if you'd like to continue, to watch, continue watching, I'd love to uh, show you how I make these. Okay, so what you're going to need um, to make this uh, album page, you're going to need two pieces of cardstock um, and use the largest charcuterie board die. So I used this one, and just to save time, I pre-cut them out. And these are pages from one of those new Michaels paper pads. So they're nice and thick. They're not 110, but you know, it's a good weight. And then cut out one of these as well. And I use this paper. This is from French Chateau. And this one cuts out the circle. If you wanted to fill that in, you could use uh, this die set here and that will, um, you know, cut a circle for you and you can fill it in there if you want to make it different than the one that pops out. Okay, so those are the two dies I use from that set. All right, and I thought we would make another another Diana Markham recipe. So I stamped out um, a recipe, and this one is for snow ice cream. And I used this stamp that I had gotten on, uh, I don't know, eBay or Macari, something like that but it's really cute. I've used it for some other projects. So I stamped it out and then just cut around it and inked the edges with some, let me show you. I used Distress Oxide and Salvage Patina. And the way I did that is I just took one of my blender brushes that I don't clean, but I use it for this color. So, and then just kind of swirl it around the edges and it just leaves a, a slight color on the edges. So that's how I did that. All right, and I cut out a piece of pom-pom trim. I thought I would show you how to put some trim on the edges, sandwich them in between. And I made this little banner. This is one of Erica's pin flag dies, and I stamped it with this sentiment that says, it's chilly. And that I had gotten from uh, Snow and Coco. This is from Tuesday morning back in the day, and that is the stamp that I used. So I used that that new recollection. Well, it's not new. The recollections paper um, that comes in like the pearlized stack. So I used that. And let's see, we'll use an eyelet. This is from Recollections from Michaels. And we'll also use a crocodile. So that's what I used. I have a few other trims here too that maybe we'll get to, maybe we won't, but let's start with this. 
Okay, so what we're going to do first is take one of the background pieces and then just glue on the, um, the pattern paper. So for glue, use whatever you'd like. I'm going to use my Nouveau Deluxe Adhesive. I like to use this because if you smear any, you know, past the edges, it dries clear so and it's it's not shiny so you don't really see it if it messes up a little and if you don't really need a lot of dry time this works great all right so got it loaded up so i'm just going to center it on top of the charcuterie board and press it down like that okay easy enough right all right now let's decorate the front and then we'll glue it to the back just so it's nice and flat okay so we're gonna take our recipe but then i thought maybe we could put something in the back to add interest this is a die cut that i had gotten a, a new die from ks craft so i thought this would make a nice layering piece on this on this page so i cut it out of that same gold foil paper so i was thinking maybe we could put it like down here and then put this on top like that yeah that looks nice right and then let's see we could take this banner that we made or that I made and put it like on the bottom like that and then we'll put something here as well um, I made this from the kitchen utensil set and this one I had to let dry so I didn't include it on the the main album so I thought maybe we could add it to this one this um, I paper pieced the spoon like I did the others and I put some puffy paint on the edges and then sprinkled it with glitter so actually it really does look like snow ice cream doesn't it so this kind of works perfectly so maybe we can do something like something like that there yeah i think that would be cute and i have a button too maybe we'll get to that as well but let's start with the background piece so i'm going to take my deluxe adhesive again and then just spread it lightly around Okay, that should be good so we'll put this like that I got glue on my hands that's what pants are for right <laughs> all right there we go and then we'll take our snow ice cream and glue that on as well Again, use whatever kind of adhesive you like. If you'd like to use a tape runner, that would work out fine here. But for me, it's just easier to use this. Okay, so we'll put that about like right there. Make it nice and straight. Okay, I'm actually going to get a baby wipe to wipe my hands off. Do you guys use those in your craft room too? I use baby wipes and paper towels a lot. Okay, so my hands are clean. All right, now let's glue this on. I think that looks so cute. All right, we'll take our deluxe adhesive. And I'll just stick it down here. And I love how they're stitching on this. They're stitching on the board itself. So it all ties together. Let me just show you what it's looking like so far. And these blues and greens are really making me happy right now. Okay, so there's that. Now for the spoon, I don't know if I want to just glue down. Maybe we should pop it up a little bit just to add a little bit more height, you know? So let me get out some glue dots. 
and some scissors. All right, so I'm going to add like a piece of a glue dot here and one there. Or not glue dot, these foam dot thingies. So you can cut these to size, which is what I'm going to do. Oops. Okay, I'll put a big piece there and then just a little piece on the edge of the handle too. Okay, and peel off the back. All right, so I think we'll put it something like, to cover up the recipe. Yeah, that looks good, right? Or maybe more like, I don't know, I get a little crazy about these things. All right, that's fine. <laughs> All right, so there's what that looks like. Oh, that looks cute. I like that. And I have a button that I pre-tied with some cotton, um, pearl cotton, just to see if maybe we want to add this somewhere. That might look cute like that. Maybe down here. No, I think we need, well, I don't know. What do you think? That's cute, but maybe we need something up here. Yeah, just to balance it out. So I'm going to take my hot glue gun and add a little dollop to the back of that button and then just put it in here hold it down for a second there we go all right that looks cute so let's add the trim to the back and then we'll glue it to this uh, the backing piece just to make it extra sturdy okay so I cut this pom-pom trim to the right size before and I'm just gonna oh, got some glue stuck to me <laughs> then I'm gonna glue this to the back of our charcuterie board and for that I like to use Fabri-Tac because obviously the pom-pom trim is fabric so that makes it stick really well you could go ahead and use your hot glue use whatever you like but Fabri-Tac is what I like to use. So I'm just gonna run a line of Fabri-Tac on the bottom like that. And put the edge of the pom-pom on the edge of the card or page. make it stick make, make sure it's sticking and then I like to turn it over and do some adjustments make sure it's even don't panic if it's not even because Fabri-Tac you have some time to adjust okay that's cute right and because of the snow ice cream it kind of looks like snowballs but it doesn't look too Christmassy you know which I like because of the colors we used Okay, so there's that. And then we're just gonna glue this one right on top. And the charcuterie board is symmetrical, so um, the back and the front fit together nicely, so you can make the back look, look pretty if you have one-sided paper. So I'm gonna go back to, actually, you know what? I'm gonna use the Fabri-Tac because we're gonna glue this onto the pom-pom trim too, and I wanna make sure it glues right. So just go ahead and go crazy with your Fabri-Tac. Use whatever you like. This is just what works for me. Make sure it got on the bottom so it'll hold that pom-pom trim in place. All right, so I'm gonna line up the top. And then press it down. Well, you can see this is a really fun mini album to make it's so easy because the pages look really cute as soon as you die cut them so all you have to do is just print out some recipes if you want the ones that I used you know my file I'll send it to you you might have it already 
um, like I said, email me and I'll, um, because that's easier for me, I could just attach it to my reply to you. It's a PDF file. And then if you have other recipe stamps in your stash like this, or, you know, if you find any more online, you could print those out and add them as well. Use your own handmade or homemade recipes, you know, ones that you have in your family. And that was, this would be a really cute gift, I think. All right, so there's our page. Let's add our eyelet. And for my crocodile, when I was doing this, I um, adjusted the placement of my hole so it's in the right place for every one that I make. So I'm just going to leave it there. Um, as you can see, I put the, the, this is the big hole. It comes with a big size and a smaller size. I'm using the big one. And I put the edge of my charcuterie board there and it lines it up right with the hole. And just go ahead and make your hole like that. And I'm going to take one of the eyelets from Recollections or, you know, use whatever. And you just push it in to the hole that you have. And it looks like that. Now for the setting for these bigger eyelets, I've done a um, like tutorial on how to, how to use your crocodile, But um, you want to use the A in one settings, okay? And I'll try and link that below too, just in case you missed it. So you put your eyelet into the crocodile and just press it together. And then you have your eyelet all done. That's what the other side looks like. And there's our page. So I am going to add this to my um, recipe book. Maybe I'll make a new apron first to put on the other side. But I like this. This is one of my favorite pages. So thanks for, thanks for making it with me. All right. I hope you liked my project. I hope you liked my little craft with me. Let me know what you think. Again, I will leave uh, Erica's site, Scrap Diva Designs, down below. And all the products that I used will be listed there as well. So thanks again, everybody. Take care, and I'll be back soon with more crafty videos. Bye.